Welcome to the Corona for 3ds Max tutorial covering the new Caustic Solver in Corona 4. We're going to be taking a look at what Caustics are, under which circumstances they can be expected in the real world, and how they can best be simulated in Corona 4. What we as CG enthusiasts mean when we talk about Caustics may seem to be a very clearly defined concept. We want the sunlight broken and focused by that glass of water, or we want the pool to cast a shimmer of light on the adjacent wall. These are details we feel we've been missing due to technological constraints and hope will give us that final boost in reaching photorealism. We may find, however, that caustics are actually quite complex, and before we flex our CG muscles with this newfound power of Corona 4 and enable caustics in every scene, we should try to base our expectations on what we find in reality. Caustics is an optical phenomenon that occurs whenever light, which usually travels in a straight line, hits an object that somehow interferes with that path, by either reflecting, refracting, or dispersing it, in an envelope of light rays cast by one object onto another. Caustics are in principle inseparable from how light travels, and it is only in the CG world where we have created this separation. This definition is so broad that if we were to disable caustics in reality, like we do in CG, rainbows would disappear, the sky would lose its color, spectacles and modern cameras would not be possible and our eyes would not be able to focus. This means that caustics are essentially ever-present, sometimes indistinguishable, and may occur in unexpected places, like windows on a facade casting light onto an adjacent building or bathroom mirrors projecting light onto the wall opposite the window. We need to keep this in mind when dealing with the caustic solver in Corona 4. To generate caustics as we would expect them in reality, the right circumstances need to be in place, meaning that ideally, we need a bright source of light, casting parallel rays into an environment that is darker relative to the source of light. The rays need to be parallel, meaning the size of the sun needs to be small, or the light needs to have a high directionality, otherwise the caustics will overlap and overwrite each other, losing contrast and becoming invisible. To show caustics in their most basic and stark form, this scene already has the necessary ingredients, a strong, unidirectional source of light, a comparatively dark scene, and a pool that will be our reflector or refractor. All that is left to do is to enable the fast caustic solver and watch how reflective caustics are generated on the walls opposite the window. I'll be using render regions here, but bear in mind that at the moment Corona 4 caustics may not render as expected with render regions, and for the time being it may be best to render the full frame when using the caustic solver. Notice how the caustic solver will take into account the displacement and the bump channels of the material, so whether we use a normal map, a bump map, displacement map, or displace the geometry itself, the results should all be equal. To see what refractive caustics would look like, we need to enable caustics in the refraction settings of the corresponding material. Now the light is being focused and spread onto the floor of the pool by being refracted through the surface of the water. To include the final type of caustics in our scene, we can add a prism, set its material to be glass, and enable dispersion. This allows Corona to calculate how light would be dispersed into its constituent spectral colors, meaning the colors of the rainbow. Dispersion can be most useful, typically in product visualizations of jewelry, for example, generally in materials that have a very high index of refraction. The Abbey number in the dispersion setting sets up the strength of the dispersion, where lower values generate higher dispersion. Usually values between 30 and 60 produce accurate results for most materials. Enabling all three types of caustics becomes computationally quite intense and will influence the render times, so it is in our best interest to optimize caustics wherever possible. For example, by default every light source, including the environment, will be used to calculate caustics. This is unnecessary though because typically only the strongest lights in the scene will generate visible caustics, meaning light sources that are too faint or dispersed, like the environment, can be excluded from the calculation to save render time. So we can go through the scene, pruning all the lights we know are not going to contribute significantly to our caustics, and keep only a few key light sources to generate caustics. We can open each light and disable caustics individually. To disable the environment caustics, we need to open the render settings and in the performance tab disable generate caustics from environment. Disabling the caustics from the environment only makes sense however if you're using a corona sun, where the sun is separate from the environment, or if we're using an HDRI where the light is so diffuse that the caustics would not be visible in any case. When using an HDRI of a clear sunny day however, the sun is part of the environment, 
and you would need to keep the caustics enabled to see desired results. Depending on the clarity of the sun in the HDRI though, it may still be the case that the caustics will clean up faster if we match a corona sun to the HDRI and disable the caustics from the environment, as the caustic solver will otherwise waste resources generating caustic from the entire sky. Matching a corona sun to the position of an HDRI and enabling only the sun to affect the caustics takes a bit of setup, but it is a great way to speed up the caustic solver. To gain more control over how we use caustics in post-processing, we can take a look at how caustics are treated in the render element settings. By default, caustics are part of the beauty channel, which means we have no control over their brightness in post. To change this, we can check the only in caustics element box, which will remove caustics from the beauty channel and make it visible only in the sea shading caustics channel. This means we can use the caustics element and composite it with the beauty element if we save both in a 32-bit format and overlay them in linear add modes in our post-processing tool of choice. Caustics work perfectly in animations without the need to adjust any special settings, so we can set up animations the way we usually would. We need to be sure though to check that we are allowing enough passes to be rendered for the caustics to clean up properly and avoid flickering, as a scene with caustics will need more passes to clean up than one without. Caustics also work with motion blur as they would in reality, meaning that caustics will be blurred if they move relative to the camera and not be blurred if they move in sync with the camera. It is important to remember that we should use references from the real world to guide our expectations when we're using caustics. This means that enabling caustics is not an instant make my scene more realistic fix and needs to be used with the same keen eye as we would when we adjust reflections or set up displacement for example, where more does not mean better, but being based more on reality means better. With that in mind though, having fast caustics at our fingertips should grant us more creative freedom and artistic control over our work, and we are excited to see the use cases that are possible with this feature. There can be some limitations on how caustics work, and you can check on those over on the Corona help desk. You can find the link in the description below this video. That concludes our tutorial on Corona 4 Caustics, and we hope that you have fun exploring the possibilities that the new Caustics Solver offers.